Hi, everyone. To get started, we have a lot of people jumping on. So we will get started here right at 7 and just hang tight for a few minutes. You guys hear me all right? We can hear yes, you. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, Mike so Test that out before we started. Yeah. Well, we have a ton of people hopping on right now, just so everyone knows. Um, we're expecting a lot of people in the room, so I'm just waiting for everyone to get on. So we'll just start here in a few minutes. If you're just now getting on, we will start here right at seven. of time. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes? Great. So welcome. Thank you everyone for taking time out of your evening. Um, we're excited to share more about the community center. We're really excited about the project and 
we have a variety of staff members and some uh, outside consultants with us tonight too. So I'll have everyone introduce themselves um, when they come to talk, but just to give you an idea of who's in the room here, we have representatives from our parks department, planning and zoning, engineering, even our city councilor. Uh, so we're, we really have everyone you uh, would need to you know, talk to to find out about this project. A few housekeeping items. Um, you are not able to unmute or be on video. Um, as a participant, only the presenters will be able to talk. However, we welcome your questions. We will probably do those all at the end after our short presentation. So I ask that you send those in using the Q&A function. If you look at the bottom of your screen, if you're not familiar with Zoom, it says Q&A and you will be able to send questions in that way. And I will be moderating those and we'll go through those later. Um, you can use the chat as well, but I ask that Q&A um, is my preference. It's easier to keep track of everything that way. We are also recording tonight. Um, so we'll have this recording that you can share you know, with other neighbors or those who weren't able to make it. Um, so just a quick run through, you're gonna hear all about uh, our plans for the center, but really more importantly, how we plan to be a good neighbor to you. So we're gonna talk about buffering and lighting, road improvements, drainage, all of that stuff. So um, that's why I wanna hold questions to the end because I think we're gonna give you a ton of information. So with that, we will dive in. A uh, quick introduction, I'm Stephanie Perry, Assistant Director of Community and Public Relations for the city. Um, so I'm really just moderating tonight, but my department is here to help you answer questions along the way and get you in touch with the right people. But with that, I'm going to um, kick it off to Jake Reardon McSoley, who is our Director of Recreation and Wellness. So Jake. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, everyone, for taking the time tonight to um, to jump on this call and learn a little bit about this project. Our goal is to share some good information, what we hope is really relevant information. And Stephanie said it really well. We want to be great neighbors. We're excited about this project, and um, I'll share a little background about kind of the origin story of this project, and then you know some of the details of the interior of the building. But really, what we think you're probably most interested in is a lot of what's you know, going to impact you. So things like the exterior of the building, traffic connections, all those things. So that being said, um, let me share my screen here. All right, hopefully, did everyone's screen just change? All right, very good. So just a little backstory to kind of share why there is a community center plan. Um, we have heard for a number of years uh, really beyond 10 years that there is a demand in our community from our residents for additional indoor recreation amenities. And you may be well aware there's actually been multiple attempts in the private sector to create a recreation center of some kind for our community. And unfortunately, those did not come to fruition. So that led the city to start to contemplate over the last several years here whether that could be something that it could take on itself to provide directly to the community. Here we go. And a little bit about why now is really important for the timing. We feel like we can respond successfully to the specific um, requests we've heard, the resident input we've gotten. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. We, we do feel like we have a pretty vibrant design that we hope as a neighbor of years, you're gonna be proud of. Uh, and we do have a strong financial pro forma to back it up. A lot of what we're gonna talk about tonight is that smart central location and, and why we chose that location, what that's gonna mean for you. Uh, we are really focused on trying to complement and not compete with existing like uh, providers, other uh, facilities with similar amenities. And we really want this to be a welcoming community center for all residents, uh, all ages, all abilities. Um, and, and we want it to really, the the magic of what we think will happen here is, you know, we're going to impact our culture of health and wellness throughout the community, but we're really going to build community. We're going to strengthen community. Relationships are going to happen and get stronger here. And we do think uh, there's some pent up demand for dogs. So there's going to be a plan for a dog park we'll talk more about. So going back a couple of years, 2021, I uh, appreciate him taking a little time today to, to join us. 
uh, City Councilman Todd Zimmerman was tasked with organizing a steering committee to really explore this idea and see if there was validity to the city potentially taking on this idea of building a community center. There was a pretty comprehensive six month period of gathering information from a variety of groups and stakeholders. And there was a large um, needs assessment survey that uh, 3,500 residents approximately responded to. To me, there's a number of um, great questions on that survey. It's available for anyone to take a peek at. It's on our website. You can look anytime if you're interested. But to me, this question specifically is maybe the most powerful. And that was when we asked our residents what they thought the top recreational amenities they thought were missing at that time in the Fishers community. These were the 15 top answers. The items in blue are what we are going to be able to directly respond to with this community center. The items in green will be amenities included in our new City Hall and Art Center uh, slated to open next May uh, in downtown Fisher. So pretty um, amazing and fun to be able to hear from the community and then turn around and deliver to the community what they're asking for. So 13 out of the 15 uh, top amenities that they felt like we needed. Okay, so what, what you want to know is, where is this place? What does that mean for, for me? And, and some of you may have already explored our website a little bit. You're welcome to do that at any time. It's a great source of information. We've got everything from fly-through videos to FAQs and more. Um, but essentially, as you're well aware, being a neighbor of this uh, specific space, we're talking about the intersection of 121st and Hoosier Road. The, if you're familiar with the Johnson family farm, uh, it would be the northernmost 15 acres of that property. And then the property immediately adjacent to the north, the Hanson property, 10 acres there. Altogether, it would be 25 total acres. The recreation center itself, the community center itself would be about 105,000 square feet. And this is just a kind of broad strokes, uh, not a lot of detail, quick shot. We're going to get into more detail, uh, as I'm guessing you're more interested in. But just to kind of give you a little taste of what we're contemplating, the from an engineering point of view and a lot of discussion, the best approach would be directly, the main entrance would be coming directly across 121st Street. So as you know right now, and by the way, just real quick, time out, pause. I didn't do a good job of explaining who I was Stephanie did introduce me. I'm the director of recreation and wellness uh, with the city. Excited to be in that role, uh, but I also am a longtime resident. I've been uh, my wife and I've lived in Fishers for 18 years. Our first home that we bought right after we got married was in Cumberland uh, Woods, right down the street on her 21st Street. We currently live in a house about a mile away from that house, uh, less than a five minute bike ride from this location. My my wife and two kids and I bike past this location all the time. So I am very, very familiar with the lay of the land and you know the pros and cons of what's going on with this particular site, but just a little quick background there. Um, so the main approach would be a, really a continuation of 121st Street. There would be a secondary entrance um, to the south part of the property. You can see we have kind of two different parking lots uh, and then the structure, the main community center really kind of sits on the north uh, east corner of the property. And then our dog park is uh, allocated really on the northwest part of the property. By design, we really want to make sure there is quite a bit of pent-up demand for a dog park, but we want to be super respectful to everyone um, around this uh, community center. So we really wanted it to be the property north of this, as you probably are aware, is just a cell phone uh, tower easement, eight acres of cell phone tower easement. Uh, so this would be, of course, fenced in for the dog park piece and really not bordering any residences. Just what can you expect when you take a look um, at this community center? Wanted to share some renderings. Um, this would be a view of the front doors, essentially, just to the right of the flag. You can kind of see our, our main entrance there. This would be the view from the southwest. And a lot of natural light throughout the building. We'll give you just a few snapshots and overview of what, what the building is really about, the facility is all about. But we do think it's going to be full of fun, wow factors that we hope you and your family can enjoy. Uh, one of them you can see kind of through the front glass here. We're going to have a pretty impressive uh, two-story playground structure uh, indoors 
right kind of inside the main entrance. We're also going to have, you might be able to make it out on the left side, a really great um, aquatic center. And there's going to be a slide that actually penetrates the outside wall and then comes back in. Here's another view, um, more as you're walking or biking up, kind of what you would expect to see. And then I think it's important to have some sort of idea of what's going on inside of this building. So we have a couple uh, cutaway, 3D cutaway models just to kind of share information. Um, it is two stories. This would be the first floor. And it is just uh, to kind of frame this a little bit, it is a membership model, which means that to get full access to all the amenities in this building, you would purchase a membership. We do anticipate Fisher's residents getting uh, some sort of discount with that. Uh, and the rates are really going to be very much in line to market rate for other facilities that have similar amenities. We really want to be um, mindful of being not too high or not too low, but really kind of right in line there. Um, so the uh, aquatic center, the basketball courts upstairs, we have, you know, a variety of exercise equipment and classes. There's a lot of fun things going on here that are included in membership. But I do want to draw attention to three specific things that are going to be available and free for you and your families and really anyone uh, that chooses to visit our community center. Uh, two of those items are on this side right now. So the, the um, indoor playground that I touched on will be free and open to everyone. We'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. And then we're also going to have what we think is going to be a pretty marquee cafe. It's going to be a large um, Kind of gathering area and we envision people kind of sitting and enjoying a meal or a cup of coffee with neighbors and getting a bite to eat before swim lessons classes those kinds of things and just to kind of give you a snapshot of the the second floor um, we do have an indoor walking track and that's going to be free as well so that is anytime the building is open it will be available um, to the community uh, and then upstairs, we will also have some member focused amenities like two different group exercise studios and a variety of um, equipment. Just some renderings of the interior of the building. This is kind of a snapshot of what the finishes are projecting to look like for the lobby area as you walk right in. You, you may notice just to the right uh, on the right hand side of this slide, it kind of gets cut off, but that's the Fisher's Health Department. We're really excited. Our health department will have a home here in the community center. We think there's a lot of natural synergy there and we think uh, that'll be a fun addition to this project. This is gonna be a look of the cafe and kind of gathering area. There's gonna be a number of um, tables and seats where you can kind of sit and get some work done on a laptop. You can meet and have a meal um, or there's also furniture to just kind of relax and enjoy um, time. And there's gonna be inside the um, playground right here, several different nodes for specific age groups. So we'll have something for really little kids all the way up to uh, school age and older kids. And kind of the big wow factor is this three kind of pillar, uh, two-story um, structure that we think hopefully kids are going to get really, really excited to have fun on. This is uh, just to give some kind of frame of context. This is about 5,300 square feet of space. Um, Actually, based on some great input input from Todd and others, we really tripled what we originally had planned. And we envisioned this to be kind of like an indoor Brook School Park. That's It's about the same size if you've gone to Brook School Park and played on the playgrounds there of, of the footprint for the, those playgrounds. Snapshot of the uh, athletic courts. There's three different courts. There's curtains that can kind of come down or go up. Uh, they can be used for a variety of things. Basketball, of course, also volleyball standards that'll come down uh, for various volleyball opportunities. And we will have uh, pickleball courts here. We can do set up and tear down uh, pickleball courts and the lining will be available for um, nine total indoor pickleball courts. So if you happen to like that sport, I think that'll be a win for this part of the community. Here's our indoor aquatic center. We're gonna have two different indoor pools. The one that's closest to us in this image is a zero depth warm water pool. Uh, that means it gradually kind of ramps and slopes down um, to about four feet at its deepest point when the slide will kind of um, exit you there. Uh, the nice thing about this pool is it's going to have a variety of splash features and fun things that'll be perfect for families on kind of just a um, open swim night. 
But then we can also turn those off and we can utilize the same pool for some therapy, some arthritis classes. And they're also perfect for kind of introduction to water, water safety and those first water uh, based swim lessons. So that pool is going to be great. It's also going to have some accessibility features. You see the dual handrails there. We're going to have a water wheelchair. Um, so we're excited about that. The pool a little further away from us across the deck is a cool wa water pool. Uh, it goes from three feet to eight feet. So there is kind of a deep end at the farthest point of this pool. It can have four lap lanes for swimming, lap swimming or water walking. Uh, it can also be a perfect pool for things like aqua aerobics. Uh, and then you, it's difficult to see in this image, but there's actually a dedicated kind of um, node to the very kind of corner, far corner of this pool with a rock climbing wall that comes out of the water. And then you kind of fall back into a splash zone in the deep end over there. So, you know, something kind of fun for a little bit older kiddos and adults. This is the view of the walking track upstairs. Nice uh, natural light kind of throughout the building. Good views of all the activities happening down in the courts. And then you'll be able to see into the wellness center as well. And again, this, this is free of charge. Anyone can kind of use this when we're open. Um, and there are a little wider lanes because we do envision people kind of walking shoulder to shoulder catching up a little bit and certainly uh, running available as well. Snapshot of what you could expect to see for our fitness facility. There's gonna be a variety of cardio and strength and functional fitness equipment. There's a cycle studio, spin studio, and then two different group exercise um, classes. We envision having around 100 to 108 classes a week. So that's gonna be an active part of the uh, project. And, I, and we hope there's gonna be kind of something for everyone here and really kind of building a sense of community and wellness, a lot of natural light, what we hope are gonna be inspiring views uh, inside and outside. You'll be able to see down into the pools and kind of around the building, but also a lot of natural light from uh, the surrounding space. Uh, this is one of our group exercise studios, just to kind of give you an idea of what that will look like. We really wanna have a space that'll kind of feel like a mini vacation when you come in for a workout. Um, and then this is a little bit more detailed uh, view of the space, just so you can kind of get a sense of what, what we're talking about. So um, there is, as you kind of come in on 121st Street, dog park would be to your left. We would have uh, parking closer to that. We haven't built out the full site plans for access points and all those things uh, still in the works for that. We will have a uh, detention pond that'll capture all of the drainage from the site, kind of right on the west side there. Um, and then you can access the proposed community or recreation center there, as you can see via either of the parking lots. And I think it would probably be a good idea to share a little bit of um, specific information about buffering and what that's gonna look like kind of on the edges of the property. Um, so we plan to have a 50 foot on the east side where we are gonna be right up against um, a number of residences, about eight different houses will be right along the east side of this property. Um, we wanna be super respectful. We do wanna have a healthy buffer there. The plan right now is to have a 50 foot buffer uh, from the property line to where we would potentially eventually build something. Uh, as you can see right now, there's really a lot of wide open space on the far east side of the property. Uh, there's approximately 275 feet from the property line to that parking lot and 224 square uh, feet from the property line to the closest part of the community center. So quite a bit of open space. Uh, we do wanna have, there's gonna be, there's actually already some mature trees. We're gonna uh, save as many as we can along that property line. Uh, to provide shade and also buffering. We'll also do plantings there and we anticipate putting a fence there as well um, all along that east side. We are gonna be putting a fence along the south side of the property and plantings there as well. And then just general uh, landscaping along the west facing part of the property. Of course, the dog park will be completely fenced in um, and we'll have plenty of shade for our four-legged friends. And then a, about a 20 foot buffer on the north side as we approach the cell phone tower easement. Um, 
I don't know, Aaron, if you're on, if you want to speak to the drainage specifically or any notes about the site plan. Um, sure. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. Um, my name is Aaron Hurt. I'm with a company called Civil and Environmental Consultants. We're working with the design team and, and the city. And yeah, just point out a few things on the site plan from an engineering perspective. Um, we have our main entrance here at 121st Street and Hoosier Road. Um, some people may be aware of the property. There's actually an existing driveway that goes to the home on the property currently. And um, we're just uh, widening that entrance a bit and um, shifting it to a line with 121st Street. Um, you can kind of see a stream or existing creek uh, stream that runs through the property. That'll largely remain intact as it is um, today. And there is a, a culvert crossing across that existing drive. So we'll just need to be upgrading that um, at, at our new uh, main entrance. And then we'll have a secondary drive to the south. So largely that, that stream will remain, or creek will remain intact. In um, from an engineering perspective, we look closely at the circulation and working with the uh, city's engineering staff on that for stacking and, and visitor parking and guest parking. Um, we do have allowances for uh, stormwater detention. So largely the site drains to the west to the existing creek. So it, it drains from, uh, on this image from uh, left to, or from right to left uh, to the west. And so we will be continuing that and we've positioned the stormwater ponds on the low, low side of the site where we'll collect water and uh, make sure we meet all the city requirements there. Uh, we will also provide water quality treatment. Um, and in general, there will be a lot more green space or you can see a lot of green space on, on the plan itself. Uh, so a lot of thought has been uh, given to the plan. Um, and with that, um, I'll turn it back to you, Jake. I don't want to dwell too much on this, but in general, um, um, this has been thought out and we have worked closely with the engineering staff on that. Thanks, Aaron. So a couple, couple other important notes. Um, I'm sure anyone close to this project has some interest in learning about uh, sound and light and what that might look like. Uh, really for the most part, there there will be sounds and, and hours of operations. Um, so uh, the building will have hours Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to, uh, we're looking at 9 p.m. currently. Saturdays would be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays would be 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, during those hours of operation, what you can expect would be some sounds with cars coming and going. There has been quite a bit of thought to trying to align uh, the main entry and, and even the south entry so that there wouldn't be headlights necessarily going in any direction and plenty of tr trees and plantings there as well. Um, there, there uh, really won't be a lot of sound generated from this building. It's kind of kept inside the four walls of the center. Not a lot of outdoor activities um, that, that we're forecasting now from time to time. There, there may be something, uh, you know, a pop-up event here or there, but it is not, there's no plan and we don't intend for this to be any kind of event uh, destination. It's really going to be utilized specifically for the purpose of this community center and really the sounds would be fairly contained to the interior of that building. The dog park, again, by design, we were trying to be thoughtful. We wanted, we knew there was demand and a lot of excitement about a dog park, but we also know that means some barking occasionally. And uh, we wanted to put that as far away as possible from any residents. So that's why it's kind of uh, been situated on that part of the, the property. Um, and that would really be on the sound side, all you can really expect um, there would be an occasional truck delivery that would be uh, coming in kind of the back of the building. You can see where it says loading. Uh, they kind of make their way around and kind of load back there. Not super frequent, but it will happen from time to time. Um, we are looking at, and a lot of this site plan is still in uh, wet clay. And so with that said, we welcome input. Um, we've given quite a bit of thought to it, but we are going to be adjusting things. I can tell you already. The internal roundabout is probably going to be different than what you see here, um, and there may be some other adjustments as well. So input welcomed. Um, from a light point of view, we'll have LED lights. The nice thing about those is they're highly directional, 
and we really anticipate kind of uh, lights coming on shortly before opening, lights going off shortly after closing, uh, just enough time for staff to safely get from their cars into the building and vice versa. Uh, but those lights will be pointed you know, onto our property. There should not be any kind of glare or direct lighting concerns at all. And again, we will have plantings, but uh, there's an expectation for a zero candle kind of uh, separation for the property line there. So that's, and the dog park is only during uh, dawn to dusk, just like all of our park hours. There won't be lighting there. We won't have anything happening at night at the dog park, um, just inside at the community center. Um, Aaron talked through some of the drainage. Maybe Megan, if you'd be up for it, talking, um, I've, I've gotten a couple questions I know about trail connections. Maybe you can kind of share a little bit about what we're thinking through with that. Yeah, thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Megan Vukasich. I'm the Director of Planning and Zoning for the City of Fishers. Uh, so as far as sidewalk connectivity goes, um, what we have, the immediate plans are shown here on the site plan, which show the sidewalk network internal to the site, but then also along Hoosier Road. Um, we're also undergoing a citywide trails and greenway study right now. So with the nickel plate trail, um, we've seen a large demand of the use of our sidewalks and trails, which has been great. Um, and because this is a community center focused on health and recreation, it's certainly a priority um, to make sure that the residents that live around here can access it by bike or foot if, if they'd like. Um, so this is a priority area as a part of that study. So we're looking at trail connections citywide, but again, um, knowing that the community center is coming here, it's, it's certainly a focus of that. I'll put the link to that study in the chat. Um, we are seeking public input at this time. Hoosier Road has already been identified as one of the areas that has some sidewalk gaps currently that need to be filled. And so we know that this uh, is an area that we should look at. With any additional sidewalks uh, being added anywhere in Fishers, there's several things that have to go into that. We have to make sure we have the appropriate right of way. We have to make sure we have the funding in place for that sidewalk connection. So. With this trails and greenway study, we're really hoping to prioritize those gaps um, and then seek funding. So I don't have the answers tonight to give you on the full uh, connection of, of this area, um, but I can tell you that it is a priority um, and something that we're definitely looking at. And again, I'll put that link in the chat um, and if anyone wants to provide input uh, or uh, I can put my email as well if anyone has any questions about trails and sidewalks. Happy to answer those. Thank you, Megan. And, and also just one note, internally on our 25 acres for this plan, we, we do want to have walkability and uh, trail opportunities. So you can see on this drawing, there, there are sidewalks. We are planning on contemplating uh, potential additional trails um, just to utilize the space that we have in the best way that we, we can for our residents. Um, and I, I should mention too, I don't think we've discussed any kind of timeline. It's important for you to kind of understand what to expect. So we just got full, you know, uh, official approval at our city council meeting one week ago today. Um, the next step for this would be, uh, we'll be closing on both of these properties here in the next month. We hope to break ground sometime in September. And that would have us, you know, opening the doors sometime, you know, no earlier than April and probably no later than about June of 2025. Uh, so there, uh, and we'll talk through more of what the, you can expect during the construction timeline here in a moment, but just so that you can have a sense of understanding, we do have two years before this is going to be fully realized. We, uh, we know there's some work to be done with things like trails and we're actively looking into those things right now. Um, I know one other thing we talked quite a bit about was uh, road improvements, and I've and I've heard and I appreciate everyone sharing some of the uh, uh, antici anticipated concerns about traffic. And I I'll share just a little bit of background. Ha excited that we have Hatem Meki with us tonight um, with our engineering department. He can share a little bit more as well. We just to kind of share a little bit about this project. Um, at one time, there was a thought about utilizing a different part of the uh, Johnson parcel. Ultimately, in the negotiations, the Johnson family really preferred this 
and that's how we've kind of landed at where we are. Uh, but honestly, I think it works out to be probably the best possible location that it can be. And, and this is why, first of all, and I didn't touch on it too much in the beginning, uh, kind of intro, but um, we evaluated several different locations for a potential community center, but this was always our first choice. And the reason why is that, as you know, as a neighbor of this site, uh, it is really kind of the middle of the bullseye for the city of Fishers. It is extremely central. It's not on a major highway uh, as you would build a health and fitness club to get as many people in the door as you can, but it is right in the middle of our community and accessible to all of our Fishers residents, which is really kind of the, the priority and the uh, interest here. So um, we're really excited that we have this central location that's really just about a 10 minute drive for any part of Fishers. This specific location at 121st and Hoosier, I think is actually ideal. From an engineering and traffic flow point of view, we have been in touch with um, our outside uh, traffic engineering partners, uh, ANF Engineering, and we've gotten some uh, high level studies. We'll be doing more on current traffic, projected traffic. We have an idea of what we can expect from visits for a center like this. Um, and they really felt like this, uh, 121st Street specific location was ideal because it sort of bifurcates the input and output of uh, both north and south traffic. In other words, um, we anticipate about 50% of the cars coming from 126th Street, about 50% coming from 116th Street, uh, but there will be, of course, some that come across 121st Street. Uh, so kind of having it right there in the middle is ideal. These Secondary drive being on the south side of the property is also very intentional. We've gave, given that a lot of thought. Should it be on the north end? Should it be on the south end? Do we need one at all? We really think we do need one uh, for a variety of reasons. Our public safety de um, departments really thought it was a smart idea. And really from a traffic point of view, if something were to happen and a car breaks down in the middle of a um, intersection at the main entry, we have a very easy secondary uh, exit and entrance. But we do anticipate quite a bit of traffic turning right as they come north, uh, which will take a, quite a bit of load off of that main entrance. We do know from doing some early studies that if we were to leave that intersection of 121st and Hoosier Road, kind of just the way it is, a three-way stop, turn that to a four-way stop, it would, it would fail. That would not work. We do know we need a different intersection there. We've explored ideas of potentially a light or a uh, roundabout. I can tell you we're leaning towards a roundabout and um, getting input from the public safety team, the police, especially the direct traffic for Hoosier Road Elementary. They actually think that would be, that's their preference. They would prefer to have a roundabout right there. It moves traffic really well. As you probably are aware, there are several other HSE schools, elementary schools that are directly on a roundabout. Um, a couple are Lantern Road Elementary and New Britain Elementary. And it's extremely helpful. And we, of course, are gonna be working very close with Hoosier Road. We're excited to explore potential partnership opportunities being in such close proximity and you know, being a good neighbor and being a safe neighbor are obviously our two highest priorities uh, with that relationship. So that's kind of a little bit on the traffic side. We also know, you know we're gonna be digging into this quite a bit more with not just the uh, you know, intersection to get into the main drive, but also you know, what does this mean for Hoosier Row? What does this mean for 121st Street? And how's that work into the priorities of improvements for the city of Fishers, knowing that this project's coming in two years? Um, so that's certainly something that we have prioritized. Uh, Mecky, would you like to weigh in or add anything to any of the engineering thoughts? Uh, thanks, Jake. Uh, name is Hatem Mecky, Assistant Director of Engineering uh, for the city. I think Jake pretty much touched on all of the items that um, there were questions on and what we're anticipating for uh, a project of this uh, magnitude and the impact that it would have on Hoosier Road. Um, we do understand that there is going to be ups and downs in traffic based on the school being nearby. We do know that uh, we are going to see some improvements on 121st and Hoosier Road. So all of the questions that were based on, you know, if we're gonna upgrade that intersection, we're definitely uh, looking uh, at options like uh, like Jake said, we have ANF Engineering engaged and they're looking at the um, several different ideas and options for that intersection. So that's, uh, so that 
answers a lot of questions that's uh, on a lot of people's minds on what's going to happen in that intersection. Uh, in addition to that, we're also going to address a couple of the uh, pedestrian crossing on 121st Street also uh, with that study. Uh, looking also on a bigger picture, the location of this of this center is kind of in the middle between two thoroughfares. Uh, we know that a lot of the traffic is going to come from 116th Street, but also to the north we have a thoroughfare 126th Street. So there is direct access from 69 to 37 to 126th Street. Uh, if 116th Street is uh, for any reason, you know, there's a lot of traffic on that uh, on that side. So there is dual thoroughfares that you can access uh, the center from. There's also an opportunity to access it from 121st Street from Cumberland Road uh, on the west side there. So there's a couple of different entry and exit points uh, to the center. Uh, and like Jake said, we've uh, engaged with ANF, our traffic consultant, to look uh, specifically at that intersection and identify what the improvements that we need to have um, on there with 121st Street along with the houses that are on the southwest of that intersection and also with rolling knoll and knowing that there's like also megan mentioned there the trail gap analysis for a lot of the people that uh walk their kids to school that will be on uh, megan's priority list as well as uh as well as hoosier road uh on the engineering list so uh, i think jake you've really touched on a lot of these uh these subjects and um we'll we'll continue the conversation of what we can do there at that intersection all right, perfect. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Hatem. Um, a little bit more information. I think it's important for you to kind of have a sense of construction, what that might look like. Um, you know, we touched a little bit on the timeline. We do anticipate starting to, to get some mobilization and work getting going um, as early as September. And, you know, through the end of the project, what does that look like? Um, Megan, I know this is in your wheelhouse. Would you want to share a little bit about noise ordinances and kind of what to expect from immediate adjacent neighbors uh, for the actual construction timeline? Yes. So in the city's ordinance, we do have limitations for construction activity um, and it's seasonal. So in the summer months, uh, really up until September, the hours that construction is allowed is from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Anything after September um, gets reduced from 7 a.m. down to 9 p.m. And so um, those are really the limitations of construction. Uh, if there were to be any special projects that would have to occur after those uh, times, we would certainly um, communicate with the adjacent HOAs and neighboring properties um, just to give them a heads up. But uh, standard hours would be that 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Jake, should we dive into some questions? Well, I think that's a fantastic idea. But one more thing before we get to questions. I wonder, Todd, thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Excited to have one of our city councilmen here. And I know he's a neighbor of this project. So maybe, Todd, would you mind kind of sharing a little bit about your perspective? Yeah, so thank you, Jay. Can you hear me OK? Good. All right, thank you. Um, appreciate everybody being on here. Once again, this was a, what's exciting about this is the community input that Jake went over and that we, we received uh, thousands of, of items and ideas, you know, just people just excited and, and, and uh, the opinions that are out there. This property is what we consider to be the best use of it. The Johnson family has, has really embraced this and excited about the legacy that they can, they can leave uh, uh, for the community. So this is, this is a tremendous opportunity. You know, there are questions. So, Jake, I know I, I do want to make sure, and you have touched on it earlier, but I just want to continue to make sure that as we go down this process of the buffering, we, we continue to address. Also, maybe potentially a trail uh, into the estates of Meadowbrook. Um, that's something that the residents really have spoke. They don't want a vehicular connection, and I agree with that. However, uh, potentially a trail. So that's something to at least examine as we look at the trail system. But I just want to thank you all for participating in this. Um, I thank the residents of Fishers for uh, embracing this. And and you, you have, there's, I see the questions. There's great questions here. Um, and the, the thing is, we won't have every single answer right this second. 
but this is how we we uh, formulate things going forward. So thank you, Jake, and everybody else. Thank you so much, Tab. Coming in, so we'll try to get through as many of these as we can. Um, do you want to keep your screen share up, Jake, or? I can take it down, or if it's helpful, I can leave it up. Well, let's leave it up in case there are things related to that. So okay. there are a lot of questions around the school. I know that we talked about working um, with Hoosier Road Elementary. Um, there's questions, um, a lot coming in from Rolly Knoll about walking their kids to school currently and being concerned about safety issues. Um, are there gonna be, is there a crosswalk? What are kind of the plans for that? So um, Jake, do you wanna talk about that to start? Certainly, yeah. So we we have reached out to um, Principal Ricketts and uh, Vice Principal Luck over at Hoosier Road Elementary. Um, I actually happen to know Vice Principal Luck pretty well, we're neighbors. Um, so we're really excited and we certainly, I, I touched on it, but I wanna emphasize, you know, this should be exciting and a, and a great opportunity, but before it gets to that point, it needs to be safe and, we, and well thought through. And we realize that. And so, um, as Hatem mentioned, we are going to be focused on where and how to make the safest pedestrian crossings here. There will be some, uh, you know, uptick in traffic. One thing I will say, though, that I think works out well um, for all parties, the current school schedule for, for elementary students, uh, approximately, you know, 7 a.m. drop off time, give or take 15 minutes, approximate, you know, 2.20 ish uh, pickup time, give or take, you know, some time there. I Obviously, a lot of traffic, a lot of activity, a lot of kids coming and going, a lot of buses, a lot of car riders, walkers, all those things. Uh, for, and, and just to kind of share a little bit of background, I didn't share, uh, prior to my experience here as the director of recreation wellness with the city of Fishers, I was with the YMCA for 17 years. I served as the executive director of the Fishers Y uh, for the last seven years there. So I'm pretty familiar with sort of the ebbs and flows and the norms of a facility similar to this. Um, and I can tell you that that actually aligns really well with sort of dead zone times, a little lower activity times, which is which is good for all parties, especially that 2 p.m. Uh, there's not, that's typically kind of a slow time. Uh, we also will be very aware of uh, programming with our school partners. So in other words, uh, we would be careful to plan out our group exercise classes uh, to not be during those windows so that we would kind of actually help with keeping traffic away during those times, but then, you know, kind of getting back into regularly scheduled programming once those times wrap up in the morning and afternoon. Um, but, but those times work out well, kind of in concert with a community center um, like this, but certainly are going to be prioritizing you know, crossing ki kids in general, crossing, um, you know, across the street with parents and kids. And uh, that's a big priority as we work forward. Great. Um, there are several questions about the property south um, up to 116th. And so um, if that is going to be developed, what is happening to that? Do you want to take that, Jake? Sure, absolutely. So, um, Mr. Johnson and his family still own the bottom, what would it be? It's 80 acres total, so minus 15, 65 acres um, and of the South. And there is no plan to sell it anytime soon. It's his property and his choice to eventually uh, do what he would like as far as selling. There are ordinances, and Megan can touch on it, with what it could be used for. Um, so we can talk a little bit about that. But there's zero plans at all for, I think uh, Mr. Johnson is a pretty hands-on uh, farmer. If you know him at all, if you've gotten to know him, and I think he's interested in continuing to work his land, continuing to farm his fields and um, and keep that part of his property going. Uh, his house is just kind of south of this. We were very respectful with the property line there for his family and uh, there's no plan at all to develop that, but Megan, would you want to touch on how what this would be zoned for if in the future at some point, Mr. Johnson and his family decide to, to sell the property? Yeah, so currently the property is zoned R2 residential, um, and so the uses of the property are limited to residential uses. Um, that is at a certain density, so right now it's being used as a farm with one single family home, but I, if it, it could develop as more single family homes in the future, um, 
if they did decide to uh, develop that land. Otherwise, if they wanted to go beyond a residential use, they would be required to go through our rezoning process. And through that process, uh, we, we hold a public hearing um, where we would place a public hearing sign on the property and notify the surrounding property owners. So no plans for that at this time, but the existing zoning to that south, to the southern portion um, is R2. I will say that through this process for the community center, we are going to be rezoning this portion of the property that you see here on the screen, um, but we're going to be rezoning that to open space. So all of our parks are um, put into the open space designation. And so if you do see a public hearing sign out there here in the next couple of months, um, feel free to contact the planning and zoning office to get more information. Um, but what that will be in relation to is the rezoning to open space. Great. Um, there are multiple questions about security. So um, for these residents and just knowing this will be a highly trafficked area, will there be um, question, there are questions, will there be a gate? Will there be um, security? Um, so Jake, that's probably a you question again. Sure. So we touched a little bit on the um, kind of the land that is going to be immediately south, immediately east. We do have plans for not only buffering and plantings, but a fence just for your situational awareness. Again, there's really not gonna be a lot of activities uh, outside this building. It will just kind of be inside the building. We will have, and we've been working with our police department and fire department you know, in step with all designs uh, for this um, recreation center. And we, we do have plans for uh, a number of cameras in the parking lot, as well as inside of the building. I would also tell you uh, with my uh, past experience, kind of the two largest opportunities for any kind of criminal activity would be that, you know, small theft, either in the parking lot or in the locker rooms. We are gonna have quite a bit of camera coverage in the parking lot and feel great about that, um, as well as license plate IDs, you know, for cars coming in and out. Um, also inside the building as a huge deterrent, we are not gonna have a kind of traditional approach to locker rooms. We're really embracing kind of what is now the next generation of locker room uh, and fitness facilities, which are individual uni universal um, changing rooms. We're going to have a number of those that are just going to be similar to what you would kind of see at a um, clothing store where it will be dry. And if you just need to change into clothes or out of clothes, it's a perfect fit. If you need a shower or to go to the bathroom, there's going to be a number of them that are going to be plumbed as well. Um, and, but the nice thing is all the lockers, if you need to keep your things uh, safe, will be under camera surveillance. So there's really no opportunity for anyone to kind of steal there. And so all those things combined, I, I think we're gonna make a pretty uh, strong statement that this is you know, not gonna be an easy place to do anything bad. We are gonna have quite a few security measures uh, in place and we are gonna have fencing kind of on all sides, uh, except I don't believe there's a plan right now for fencing on Hoosier Road uh, because it's a natural border right there. Right. Um, there are multiple questions about amenities. So um, is there a plan to potentially host any um, traveling volleyball, basketball tournaments in the gym? Yeah, excited to talk amenities anytime. Um, <laughs> so we will certainly have plenty of those activities, but but uh, not tournaments. And, and by design, this is not um, really going to be a destination that would draw people from out of town to come play in like a basketball tournament, volleyball tournament, pickleball tournament. It's really for, by our residents, for our residents. And so we'll have some leagues, we'll have some open time to play. Uh, we're, it, we have no intentions of being any kind of destination for tournaments. We have no intentions of this being a moneymaker for, for tournament activities of any kind. It's for our community, not for tournament revenue. Now, there are other developments in Fishers that I think are, you know, currently constructed in future construction that are going to be doing that, but this isn't that. All right. What about a sauna or a steam room? Yes. Uh, so actually, uh, we just kind of in the last month here adjusted our plan to add in a, a spa, kind of a hot uh, room, dry heat room right off the pool deck. Um, and it should be fantastic. Uh, and it's going to be just adjacent to the warm water pool. We'll have some deck showers as well right there. And we think it's gonna be a fun amenity and, and a little bit more unique. 
And questions about um, membership, which to clarify, um, those fees have not all been determined yet, but there's already been a lot of conversation around those. But people are asking, is that going to be like a monthly membership fee, like an annual fee? Um, will that be like a club fee? How, do you have any information on how that will work? Sure. Yeah, I can speak to that. So we we have built out a pretty extensive five year pro forma for this project, and you know we do have numbers in there, of course, for all the different membership uh, categories and a variety of other factors that are going to play into those things. Um, that said, because this won't open for two years, we're really not going to be kind of sharing any public uh, membership rates until we're ready to sell memberships, which we're not, uh, and so. Uh, inflation and a variety of, you know, economy, different things happen. But what I can tell you is we're going to have uh, probably four different categories of memberships. You can have your whole family. You can be just yourself. There can be a, a kiddo, like a youth, um, or you can have kind of two adults. And, um, and we'll have, it'll be a monthly EFT, kind of a normal draft that'll happen. Uh, unless you'd prefer to pay like one time annual uh, just for a whole year, you can do that too. That's fine. There's not going to be any cancellation fees. There's not going to be any long-term contracts of any kind. Uh, so you would get your membership set up. And if you, for whatever reason, move or it's not a fit for whatever reason, you're free to cancel at any time. Uh, those rates are going to be, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, really kind of in line with market rates that you could expect now. So like facilities, kind of like a Monon Center, you know, all the variety of uh, amenities and, and um, centers that are here in Fishers kind of along 37 and, and even along Allisonville, kind of similar facilities, similar prices. We want to complement, not compete. So we don't want to undercut anyone. We also don't want to go too high. We want this to be affordable. We will have some discounts for um, military, uh, active duty and veteran uh, mm -hmm. discounts. We will have some corporate membership opportunities and discounts there. Uh, as I mentioned, all Fishers residents will have uh, some form of discount as well. And we're looking at free and reduced lunch uh, discounts as well. So we're exploring a lot of different things in the membership realm, but you can kind of expect to hear more in about a year. And, and we're gonna be really excited to start selling those memberships uh, as we get closer to the beginning of the, the center opening. Um, there was several questions about the workout facilities. Are those comparable to maybe, you know, talking about the Y or like an LA fitness and will there be programs like the silver sneakers program, things like that? Yeah, I would say, um, the workout amenities and equipment and programming we're going to have is going to be top notch. It's going to be outstanding equipment, uh, outstanding staff great instructors for all kinds of um, variety of classes, all kinds of formats for our Group X classes. So we we certainly will have some Silver Sneakers um, programming. We need to start having some conversations to see if it makes sense to have. There's a, if you're familiar with Silver Sneakers membership opportunities, there's a variety of those type of memberships, Silver and Fit, uh, and so on and so forth, where uh, you as a, if you have a certain if you're over a certain age and you have a certain kind of healthcare plan, you may not need to pay at all for membership or it might be a very strong discount. We're exploring all of those options um, and kind of what those would mean financially on all parties and what we can do to serve our residents the best. I can tell you specifically though, we've had some great input from the senior community. We're gonna have a variety of great land classes, water classes. We're also gonna have an opportunity in this building. There's uh, four, pretty significant size community rooms that I think are gonna be used for all number of things from enrichment classes to trainings, to gatherings, to birthday parties. And we do think we've had specific input that there could be, um, there needs to be some homes for social opportunities, you know, card games and things like that for our, some of our senior groups. So we're excited to be, you know, a potential host for those types of things. So. Uh, hopefully that provides a little bit of input on and answers that question a little bit. Yeah. Um, so Jake, a lot of questions about this uh, future potential outdoor aquatics facility and what that means. Yeah. So we think there is an opportunity to do some kind of outdoor aquatic amenity on this property at some point. Uh, that would not be this original phase when we open in 2025. 
And to be honest with you, we have no timeline, no design, no even high level contemplation of specific amenities. All that really is, is kind of a placeholder for where it would make sense to have plumbing and parking uh, for something to eventually happen. Uh, so the only real kind of uh, hard, you know, phase two, uh, you know, amenity that we know we really want to get done eventually, you know, at, at some point would be a second floor outdoor terrace uh, for workouts and trainings and all kinds of fun things. We, we're going to have the um, means to have a structurally sound roof on a part of our outdoor second floor that we're excited about. We, we are excited to potentially explore an outdoor aquatics um, center of some kind. I can tell you with the uh, amount of acreage we have earmarked here, this is gonna be a very, very um, small footprint compared to something like a Monon Center. So for those that might've been to like the outdoor uh, Monon Center, you know, aquatic center, nothing like that. There's just not space for that in, on this property. And I'm not sure we would want that anyways, but we do think that there's a, uh, appetite, it was on that uh, top 15 answers list. Um, and it's going to be one of the things that we're not going to be able to answer in this particular original build, but we hope to contemplate that in the future. But at this time, we don't have any designs, plans, or timeline. Seen. Um, pretty much, I can't even pick an area because people are asking about all of the different sides. So if you could just kind of clarify um, the fencing and the bordering on each side of the property. Sure. Yeah. Um, so looking kind of first on the south side, as we would be adjacent to the Johnson property, uh, you can see there we have about a 40 foot um, buffering. We're going to have uh, a black uh, coated um, chain leak fence at his request, Mr. Johnson's request, uh, kind of all along the south side property and alternating kind of evergreen trees planted on kind of uh, either side of that fence. And they grow quickly. So here in a few years, you probably would not even be able to see that fence. Um, but that's kind of the plan on the south side. At this time, we're exploring options, but felt like it would make sense to, you know, aesthetically at least to continue the same fencing on the east side of the property. So the same idea, you know, actually a little bit larger buffer, 50 foot buffer, but then the same kind of fencing and then, you know, additional plantings uh, along those lines to complement what's already there with the mature trees that we know are on the property. Um, on the north side, I believe there's already an existing fence for the cell phone uh, acreage uh, just adjacent to the north. And on the west side, I don't, we'll have a fence uh, all around the dog park. So clearly on that side, we'll have a fence. I don't know that we've discussed what it will look like uh, along Hoosier Road, other than that part of the property. I don't think we've explored having a fence in there. Honestly, there wouldn't be really much of any kind of traffic. As you can see on this map, there's really no draw for people to be over there uh, other than, you know, maybe fishing in the, in the pond. Uh, at some point, if we have that stocked, um, or if we do something, I mean, that's really kind of the only thing on that side. There's really no draw except for the um, trails that we're going to be putting in. So, as many of these as I can. Um, will this facility be used for summer camp programming, things like that? And what is this flex lawn outdoors uh, supposed to be used for? Yeah. So yes, we do anticipate using, um, having camp at this facility. We're excited to uh, offer this location in the future for camp. Um, you know, we'll have some great spaces indoors that'll work for campers to kind of spend some time in the AC. We'll have some good uh, space outdoors. And of course, we'll have opportunities to swim and potentially use some of the gyms. So it could be a really fun camp location. We do anticipate that it, uh, as adding that as one of our locations for camp. The flex lawn at this point is just a space holder. We don't anticipate building any kind of, um, you know, baseball, soccer, sports fields there. Um, someone kicked around an idea of outdoor pickleball potentially there at some point, but there's no, there's really no plan at all for uh, using that flex lawn other than just open green space at this point. And so um, 
obviously questions about like what the detour route would be, which we don't have um, exact construction details yet, but you know, just concern about people driving through neighborhoods. So um, I don't know if you want to touch on that, Jake or um, Hatem, if you want to talk about that. Yeah, I don't know that I would be uh, super qualified to talk about the great, uh, you know, the, the various ways to detour there, but I know there's a number of options, um, you know, when we would have construction for, you know, a potential roundabout there, I think there's a number of options to consider, but I don't know, Hitem, if you have any thoughts to that. Yeah, obviously the, um, the maintenance of traffic of whatever the option is for that intersection on 121st uh, and Hoosier will be dealt with accordingly. If it was a closure, the detours will be advertised and um, it will be signed uh, to go to separate, uh, to other um, roadways that, that qualify for a detour here. But also if it, if it doesn't qualify for a roundabout or a roundabout is not needed, then uh, we don't necessarily need to close that road. Uh, I know there has been a lot of uh, concern about cut through traffic through rolling knoll. Um, uh, if there is going to be a detour route, we're obviously, and, and similar to what we've done on other parts of the city, is that we monitor if there is uh, a lot of cut through traffic, and then we, um, we, uh, we apply different strategies, uh, whether it's a, um, it's a barricade or we apply uh, some uh, signage or bumps or anything of that nature and any co composition of those uh, would would occur on uh, on the rolling nor rolling old neighborhood so uh, depending on what we uh, identify as the solution of that intersection we will definitely look at the um, the neighboring communities and the homeowners and we'll uh, deal with that accordingly when it comes yeah, and I don't think our plan would ever be to intentionally route cars through a neighborhood. We would always find a you know a secondary street uh, to to get anyone through any kind of detour. All right, um, I do want to touch quickly about the cost for this because um, I know we talked about you know no no tax uh, increases plan, but just some. You know, is that set in stone? Um, what is the plan to pay for this facility and the kind of regular maintenance of it? Yeah, happy to do that. So the building itself, if you've seen any figures, you might have heard the number 60 million. So our not to exceed number for all things, including purchasing property, including infrastructure improvements that we've been discussing and construction of this uh, building would be no more than 60 million. We would like to spend less than that. That actually has been kind of budgeted for a few years now as a future uh, plan for the city. So uh, the nice thing too about the particular way we're financing this project, it's called a buy, uh, operate trade, a BOT agreement. And so we actually, the city itself would not start making payments until 2026. That's, uh, again, some thoughtfulness there. We anticipate having better interest rates and a uh, more favorable financial situation for the city at that time. So that's a plus. The um, There's two kind of separate things financially. So there's the building of the building and all the things that we talked about, purchase of land, infrastructure, et cetera. Et cetera. And then there's the operation of the building. The operation of the building, again, we've worked through some pretty detailed pro formas and kind of with some of my background, I think we've got some fairly conservative numbers plugged in for what we think we will be generating revenue wise, program uh, wise, sponsorship wise, um, and then expenses and correlating, um, you know, P&Ls. And we do have a goal of breaking even and not being any kind of burden to taxpayers at all to operate this building. Um, it's gonna be a large operation. There's gonna be quite a lot involved with it, uh, but I am fully confident that it'll be able to stand independently financially and, and pay for itself, break even. Uh, the, the land and the building of the building has always kind of been positioned uh, you might have heard this already, but the mayor has kind of uh, talked about this for a few years now. The This community center we're talking about tonight, the event center that's under construction right now, and the new city hall and art center that we're excited to have open next May, um, all three of those projects 
the goal and the plan and the promise is getting built without any increase in taxes at all. Uh, they're just an available amenity. And the reason we're able to do that really goes back to, it's almost a kind of a changing of the chapter for our community. Uh, you might've heard over the years, a large number of really great economic development opportunities that the city of Fishers has worked hard on uh, to, to recruit businesses to come and live, play and uh, thrive here in, in the city of Fishers. Well, all that has been good work to build a tax base that now we can turn around and really emphasize quality of life and culture of health here. Uh, so excited to be able to provide those projects without any kind of tax increase um, to our residents. And, um, and then the operation of it should not be a burden either. We'll want to share as we wrap up. Well, there are um, more questions than we can answer. However, I feel like we touched on a lot of the big ones. There's a lot of just recommendations in here and things you've asked us to think about and consider. So do know we're saving this whole um, chat. We will discuss these um, questions or these um, recommendations. We really value you taking the time to submit these. I did put my email in the chat. Um, if you have follow-up questions specifically um, that have not been answered, I also put Megan Vukasich, our Director of Planning and Zoning's info in there, as well as the trail survey she mentioned um, that is open. So we ask that you take some time to fill that out. Um, and it will take a while before we um, announce the plans for the trails, but as we share, that is top of mind. Um, we also, I put in there the link to our landing page for the community center, which has all of the great renderings that Jake showed. It has um, a virtual fly through on there, the site plan. Um, so you can really dig in there and learn more. And as I mentioned, this is recorded. So um, we will make sure we get this up on the website um, for you to check out, but we really appreciate you taking that time. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, and kind of help to illustrate that we are thinking of all these things. And uh, we really just appreciate your time and your feedback. So on that, we will conclude for the evening and everyone have a great evening. Thanks so much, everyone.